So if you are part of those people who, for some reason, do not just want to rush, you finish your master's in the UK and then now you're wondering, what next? What are the options available to me? Um, you see most people rush, rush to get the healthcare assistant visa and you're like, okay, no, I don't think that that's for me or you don't want to do that first. You want to make sure you've explored all the other options. This video is for you. In this video, I'm going to be exploring the different options available to those of you who are considering staying back in the UK after your master's degree. If that's something that interests you, zip tight. And if you're new to this channel, do it to subscribe. My name is Emmys Gideon and I share tips with you on how to both relocate and to thrive in your new location. Let's dive right into the meat of the day. So, what has been happening is that we've seen a high number of people who come into the UK with masters uh, for a master's degree and then decide, you know what, I think I'll stay back. And many of them rush in to get the healthcare assistant visa or the health and care visa. And now the one year, two years down the line, they're wondering, hmm, would I have waited? What's happening? Um, have I made the right choice? You know, they're just going through the motions because they realize that uh, if they had known better, they would have waited. And many of the people are coming out to say, look, we didn't know, we're not uh, as informed. So, so that's why we made the decisions we made. So that's why I'm making this video. For those of you who are in that place, you're trying, trying to make a decision right now. So first things first, what are the visa pathways available for those who may want to stay back in the UK? Uh, there are a few visa pathways. I'll gloss through the different visa pathways. And then we'll talk about sponsorship jobs, how you can position for them. Uh, and then we'll now conclude this video with the graduate routes, the graduate route visa. The first thing you want to bear in mind uh, that head and cave visa is not the only visa route available. Uh, I may do more in depth video on them, but there's a scale of visa that allows you to stay back in the UK and work for an employer for six months. Then you have about two years to become self employed in that two years. And then there's a global talent visa that gives you the option of three years or five years visa, and all, it all counts to long stay, indefinitely to remain. And then there's the tier two visa, which is one most people know, or skilled worker visa, that where you get an employer to sponsor you on a COS. And then you have the health and care visa, which is most people already know about that. There's also the startup visa or innovators visa and before now it used to require fifty thousand pounds to be able to get on that visa but now you don't you no longer require fifty thousand pounds all right so so in subsequent videos we'll talk about all of these different uh visa routes and go into the details of how you can get there now, now let's let's quickly touch on this skilled worker visa the tier two visa now for many people have been wondering that how can I get employers to give me this visa? I'll give you two tips in this video. The first tip is you need to invest quality time in your CV. Look, your CV is what tells your career journey, what tells your employment history. This is what most employers see before they even get to meet you. But for some people's CV, it does not tell a good story. It does not. Uh, communicate the, the, the transferable skills, the skills you picked up, or the some of the very valuable work that you've done. So sometimes if you need to talk to a professional to help you work out your CV, do it. Invest quality time into your CV. Because that's the first step that, that will likely get you, give you access into the door. So that's number one. Now, number two is to get some training now i understand that you probably just finished the master's degree you're, you're not in the right headspace some of you may say may think you don't want to stress i've stressed all the stress i can't no uh sometimes it's you may require some auxiliary training some supplementary tra training to add to the master's degree that you already you now have take these trainings so whether it's a, a simple coursera training or a udemy training or an independent body that you need to pay and take these trainings, take these trainings. What they do is that these trainings position you as someone who is interested in developing themselves in that area. Someone who uh, who has an interest 
in that uh, career pathway. One of, one of the easiest ways to know the relevant trainings to take is look on the job description and find out what they, there are some, some, some of those training uh, qualifications, they call them essential, some they say desirable. Pick up the desirable trainings, not just the essential ones, because if you have the essential ones and you have the desirable ones, it makes you a good fit. And once you are in the door, it's easier to now have the conversation of sponsorship. And for some of these companies, when they see that your CV tells a good story and you've, you've taken some of these complementary trainings that they would ordinarily have, have paid for you to take, what happens is that they just want to sponsor you off the bat. So these are these are some things that I have seen not too many people implement uh, in their own uh, job search. So implement these things in your own search and see how it adds value. The next thing we we'll talk about now is the graduate visa route. Now, a lot of people keep saying the graduate visa route now does not count to anything, does not count to anything. Well, that is not exactly correct. It counts to the 10 year settlement route because it says if you've been in the country for 10 years, 10 continuous years, legally, you are eligible. So it counts on the 10 years route. It just does not count on the five years route. And the question really is, why are you in a hurry? What's the rush? If you have decided to stay back here, why are you rushing? You've most likely been here as a student, so you've not been able to explore and make an objective assessment of this environment. So one of the things that the graduate visa route does is it buys you time. And that's a big thing that you really need to be on your side, time. So if you, have, if you are considering staying here, become open to taking the graduate visa route. Become open to the graduate visa route. Take it, use it to take relevant training, use it to position for uh, certain jobs, use it to apply, make all the applications you need to make. And you may just be amazed at what doors open for you. But that's not even the exciting part of the graduate visa. Look, if you are considering going to just countries like Canada or Germany, the graduate visa route, you should jump on it because Canada is looking for people, Germany is looking for people right now. These countries are making pro-immigration policies. And what's, what's happening is that these countries are these countries want you to come. And you may not go there as a student anymore. You, If you are on the graduate visa route, you can easily position yourself, walk your way into these countries or preferably position for some of the other visa routes I mentioned earlier because your three months period may not be sufficient for you to pursue this, some of these other visa routes. So that's why I highly recommend that you consider the graduate visa route. Finally, look, there's nothing wrong with going back to your country, to your home country. So what some people undermine is the fact that Although uh, you, you are beginning to see opportunities in the UK, when you take a UK degree back to your home country, you are likely not going to, going to be able to assess better opportunities than you could assess before you came into the UK. So what this does is it should empower you to make the right decisions as opposed to just settling for whatever comes across your way. I hope this video has been able to help you. In subsequent videos, I'm going to dive, dive into these different visa routes and and share what you need to do and how you can position for these different visa routes uh, after your master's degree. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, ask in the comments. And if you're not a subscriber yet, do well to hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get to, uh, all the valuable content that will be coming your way in the subsequent days, in the coming days. Thank you.